Wait for another two, three minutes. Sir, I'm going to go Saramvik send me the Saramvik I have Sir, you can you can start, sir. We can okay. start almost uh, just twelve uh, members are there. We can start. Meanwhile, I will admit, sir. Oh. It's four. Good evening to all present here. I am happy and honored to welcome all the participants. And uh, today is the 49th uh, series of lecture as a part of the upskilling program and uh, our reskilling program for the Nirmiti Kendra engineers on the topic uh, construction management and economics. It has been phased for four phases. It is hybrid mode only, two phases offline uh, completed. This is the fourth phase online. And uh, as a part of uh, this uh, upskilling program, you, you all are uh, the majority of the engineers are from construction industry. First, let me welcome our uh, today's speaker of the day, Dr. Krishna Kumar, sir, a former scientist uh, from Chemical Engineering Research, Electrochemical Research Institute from Karaikadi, and also a dean and R&D head of Nagarjuna College of Engineering. I welcome you, sir. I'm very happy and honored to have you today uh, to share uh, your expertise in the area of corrosion. Uh, corrosion, and also I welcome all the participants, uh, Nirmiti Kendra engineers, project directors and also all uh, budding uh, postgraduate students and also some of the participants are from uh, construction management training institute uh, from bangalore see they are all uh, going to join see as the corrosion is an important subject uh, because the structures the distress structure one of the symptoms is corrosion how to prevent corrosion see prevention is better than uh, any cure therefore today the speaker is going to highlight with uh, four decades of experience in the area of corrosion, worked as a former scientist at Karekudi, and we are all going to benefit today. And this subject will give the how to prevent corrosion. I request all the Nirmiti Kendra engineers to in, interact with the speaker of the day at the end, also, or in between, whenever you have a doubts. This is a very, very, import, a very important topic we have uh, organized as a part of this uh, skill program. The corrosion once comes for the building, it is like a cancer only. Then how to repair? Because even 5% corroded, corroded rebars will reduce 10 to 15% of ultimate load bearing capacity of the structure itself. Therefore, especially the aggressive environments, marine structures, see this is very important. Even in uh, if you are not doing a proper quality control, quality concrete, then uh, the your rebars is going to corrode. Because we all know that the making of concrete, whether it is a good or bad, it is in our hand only. If you are not following any process parameter, the concrete is going to end with bad only. Finally, the job of the concrete is protect rebar. When it is not going to protect, the corrosion starts. See, today our speaker, uh, Dr. Krishna Kumar, is going to highlight the corrosion mechanism, how corrosion is going to occur, and what are the various uh, remedial measures as a preventive techniques. And also, sir, has worked very vastly and uh, contributed uh, many projects. Just I uh, will introduce to the August gathering uh, his uh, achievements as a, a scientist of uh, CSIR, CECRI. Dr. Krishna Kumar is working as a professor and dean R&D at NCET. And he has an experience as a scientist at uh, CSIR, CECRI, uh, and contributed uh, more technologies for the corrosion protection of steel in concrete structures because the job of the concrete is to protect the steel. When it is not going to protect, the corrosion starts. At present, he is handling sponsored research project from DRDO 
and AACT as a specialist in uh, numerous consultancy services were rendered to government and private in the area of condition assessment, vibration analysis, quality control of materials, and suggesting repair materials. I'm happy to share his, sir is a consultant, uh, chief consultant for Bartman developers. He has done a lot of projects with respect to the condition assessment, vibration analysis, quality control, uh, with, in addition to other projects in Bangalore also. In his credit, a new materials have been developed recently, such as uh, super plasticizers, energy generation from septic tank, corrosion inhibitors, and also a reference electrode uh, for corrosion assessment. So this is a brief introduction about the today's speaker. And I request all the participants uh, to interact with the speaker at the end of uh, one hour or one and a half hour. Or you can post all your doubts or queries in a chat box. Uh, we will take up the one by one. And now I request and also I welcome once again for the all the participants. And also I welcome uh, once again Dr. Krishna Kumar sir. Sir, I'm very happy uh, for supporting this event. And I will uh, thank on behalf of our center also. And uh, now I request you to take over the session, sir. Thank you once again. And also I welcome Sanat Kumar, online coordinator of this uh, online programs. Welcome Sanat and other honorable members who are all joined recently. I welcome once again all of you. Thank you once again. Thank you, Dr. Venkatesh Babu. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I, I feel that this is uh, one of the wonderful opportunity for me uh, for sharing my experience uh, with the practicing engineers. Uh, I really thankful to the Vimidhi Kendra for uh, giving me this uh, wonderful chance. And uh, I think next one of hours we'll uh, discuss about uh, not only corrosion and uh, our journey, what are, no, what are all we have done and how we have solved the corrosion problem, everything we will be discussing here. So now I am sharing my screen. Uh, my screen is uh, seen, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we are able to see, sir. First slide. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, dear engineers, um, uh, this is the one uh, today I am going to present, which is uh, corrosion measurement and remedial measures with the, the, some case studies. <clears throat> Uh, so today's lecture I am planning like this, uh, corrosion measurement and the mechanism and uh, the failure, then after that what are the protective measures and finally I will be highlighting if time permits how the repair and rehabilitation can be done. Uh, these are the idea today I am planning to uh, present it before you. And uh, whenever you find uh, uh, any uh, questions, any doubt, please immediately you can post your question, you can raise and immediately that can be answered. So this is the way we can proceed for the next uh, one after two hours. And uh, I request all the participants, uh, you can ask more doubts and more questions. It may be quite good. Okay, let me start now. So when you are talking about corrosion, everybody knows that there is a failure. Corrosion leads to a failure, failure of a structure. That too, especially for concrete structure, even a small corrosion, that leading to a huge failure, which we experience in India, uh, like uh, Mondo Bridge collapse. And in Delhi, there are some residential uh, buildings and so on. So many failures we have seen. There are a lot of bridges abandoned due to corrosion problem. Even uh, you know very well, Thane Creek Bridge at Bombay. In the old Thane Creek Bridge, nowadays is not at all useful. Then new one is uh, constructed and that is in use. So like that, it's so many bridges. I mean, uh, uh, in National Highway Authority of India, so many bridges which are under, uh, uh, I mean, due, abandoned due to corrosion problem. In, uh, you can ask some questions about uh, why, what is the necessity in Karnataka or otherwise what is the necessity in Bangalore. Corrosion is not only happening in the seashore, corrosion happening, I mean progressing even within uh, in inland also that may be due to there are various other factors. 
that means a carbonation process and also poor quality of materials used and poor drainage uh, drainage incorporated like that there are lot of uh, uh, mistakes which we included in the construction uh, duration so that creates all corrosion problems yeah i have seen in uh, 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 bangalore so many multi story building they are having a perennial problem of this kind of a corrosions that means the drainage normally may, uh, the drainage was not proper that lead to the seepage of uh, water and that enters into the concrete that itself end up to start the corrosion that is happening there now this is a small model is a global model how the corrosion uh, process is happening during the service life first initiation takes more time that is depends upon the quality of material and where it serves i mean the environmental factors and uh, method of usage all these are coming in initiation period if everything is poor the initiation period will be very small if everything in good quality you can extend the initiation period long so that means it have it will have long durability once initiation period started i mean initiation of corrosion started then the propagation is little steep and after that the propagation period also one can extend suppose for example if you are able to and if some corrosion process is already initiated then during the propagation period you can repair that particular situation you can repair the structure and you can extend the propagation period that also possibility is there so thereby you can increase the service life of the structure once propagation completed then the failure is very short duration any time it may failure so whatever means if you want to extend the service life of the structure you can best way to in i mean increase the service life at the initiation period by way of good quality concrete good construction practice good materials and some protection measures with that you can make initiation longer and uh, with regard to propagation then you have there you can have a proper rehabilitation measures you can extend the propagation period also but failure you cannot extend it may be in the uh, catastrophic uh, stage so this is the small model that is for corrosion why we have to bother about the corrosion that is importance of corrosion that is economic loss human safety conservation of resources this is the one economic loss means you have direct and indirect so human safety also very important conservation of resources means we are abandoned so many bridges due to corrosion of concrete structures steel in concrete structures so this is the fundamental principle of uh, uh corrosion how it is happening for example the steel if it is in the acid it will start corrode very faster for example in this graph the y axis is potential potential means that is electrochemical nature of the surface of the steel and the ph in the x axis when you see the ph less than 7 or less than 6 when you make less than 6 that uh, our potential that uh, 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 mild steel which is we are using as an uh, reinforcement so that in between 0 to minus 0.4 it normally this is the region that potential which is lying over there so in this cases if the ph is less than 6 it will be undergoing a general corrosion general corrosion mean it is the corroding uh, situation is highly adequate and the fast it will corrode like uh, if you are putting uh, your steel into uh, acid hydrochloric acid or nitric acid any acid so what happen normally our concrete 
having a pH of 12.5 and above, you can just imagine this is 12.5, corresponding to that pH, it, it is lies in the perfect passive region. This is the normal, our uh, situation of our steel. When you make, when it is in perfect uh, passivity region, okay, what is perfect passive region? So when we are putting the steel into the highly alkaline solution, that OH minus ions, which reacting with the concrete surface, it forms a passive film. That is called the passivity. That is really protecting the steel from the corrosion when it is in highly alkaline medium. But what happened? Suppose if the chloride penetrates inside, the perfect passive region, it is shifted to imperfect passive region. Perfect passive region shifted to imperfect passive region. And suppose, for example, in this area, your concrete is carbonated, then the pH reducing to 10 or something. So that particular potential coming to the general corrosion region. So in that cases, the corrosion will be very faster. This is the way the process is happening. You can see that two dotted lines, the upper side A and B, two dotted lines. The A is a, in this uh, dotted line, if your steel is lying, then there will be generation of hydrogen ions. I mean, uh, uh, hydrogen generation. Because of that process, uh, I mean, corrosion process, hydrogen is evolving. Here in B, oxygen evolving, uh, evolution of oxygen will be there. That we have to shift in a different way. That we will discuss in the, when we are coming to electrochemical protection. So, what we have to do, always keep our steel in perfect passive region. Perfect passive region. If you are able to keep perfect passive region, your steel is always protected and your structure is always protected from the corrosion. How to keep the perfect passive region? The perfect passive region, if you wanted to keep, it can employ chemical method, electrochemical method, and you can make some coating system. All these procedures, if you are introducing into your steel, that may be kept in a highly perfect passive condition. So this is the general phenomena for corrosion process of steel in concrete. This is pertaining to steel in concrete. I am just playing one video. You can just go through, then we will be having a discussion about it. Uh, this is, for example, a bridge. Either sea water or any other thing. When the steel is embedded into concrete, there are OH ions because the, during the hydration of concrete, you will be getting OH ions, which make the surface passive flame. Now this color is passive flame. You are seeing the chloride. The chloride in uh, sea water, it is penetrating into the concrete. Suppose if it is in atmosphere, the chloride, that is the chloride penetrating into the concrete through moisture. So the seashore area above the water level, there is a fog formation. In the fog contains chloride and it is attacking on the surface of the concrete. So the, thereby the chloride is migrating into the steel. Now the question is, why chloride has to migrate into the steel? You know very well, our steel is an iron, ionic material, iron material, that is Fe. Fe is having plus plus, two positive 
uh, outer layers. So positive nature. Because of two positive, the CL is one negative. So the one negative always attracted to more positive ions. So in that cases, there are the chlorides are migrating to steel surface and to attach with ferrous. That means in the iron. Iron surface, it is attaching and it forming a product. So thereby the corrosion is initiating because earlier you are having FeOH twice, that is ferrous hydroxide, a passive flame. Now this fellow Cl minus, it is going and dissociate the ferrous and hydrogen is separated, or um, uh, hydroxyl is separated and forming further reactions. Then the corrosion product started. So when the corrosion product started, the loss of uh, metal, that is reduction in uh, reinforcement uh, diameter, and correspondingly, that also exerts a pressure, spalling of concrete, everything is happening. You are seeing now. See that because of the corrosion product, you will be getting a crack. The corrosion product is higher volume than the metal loss. So within the matrix of the concrete, it is pressure exerted and it is getting spalled. When it is spalling, the steel is available readily for corrosion and further corrosion is taking place and deterioration also taking place. So, that uh, video might have given some idea about uh, the, how the corrosion is taking place. The question is, when it is in the sea water, readily the uh, sea water is going, I mean chloride is going inside because in the sea water you will have abundant chloride in the form of magnesium chloride, the calcium chloride and sodium chloride. All chlorides are rich in seawater. The maximum chloride level in seawater is 35,000 ppm. That has been already reported. So, okay. So that seawater, the chloride availability, it is penetrating. Why it is penetrating? That also explained. The Cl minus is having affinity towards the ferrous ions. Here, Fe, it has the 2 plus, Fe 2 plus. So the Cl minus having always affinity to attach on the, uh, I mean, uh, ferrous ions. So this is a way, this is the general corrosion is happening. Even without chloride also, the corrosion is happening. That means Fe releases and correspondingly, the electrons are flowing on the cathodic side. It forms OH minus ion. FeOH2 is forming. Then after that, it is FeO. FeO3 and all it is forming, that is the further corrosion products. When chloride is coming, that is very faster way of corrosion process. If the chloride is not there, the initiation process is very, very long. The, in our model, the initiation of corrosion will be very long. When the chloride penetrates inside, the initiation period is very short. So we have to avoid the chloride to penetrate inside the concrete. So that is the condition. How the anodic reaction and cathodic reaction happening, that is the one it is given in video, that is Cl minus from the uh, chloride from the seawater and it is forming separately Fe plus plus 2L minus 2L. Because of the 2E minus electron, it is happening in the cathodic reaction. The cathodic reaction is all water with the electron, it forms OH minus ions. So what happened initially, it is forming FeCl2. Because of this, it is forming, once the electron is going, immediately these two are coupling, it is forming FeCl2. The, then acting with water, it is forming FeOH2. 
because this cathodic reaction is also coming over there and you will be getting FeOH2 and hydrogen is evolving, hydrogen 2 H plus is there and 2 Cl minus is there. Then what it will happen? It forms a HCl, HCl is the assay. So the Cl minus initially disrupting the passive flame and initiate the corrosion. Then after that dissociate, it create a reduction in pH. That means it acidic environment it creates. So you know very well when it is acidic, as per the potential pH diagram, the corrosion will be very faster. So through this, what we can understand is when the chloride is contaminating, the corrosion is very, very dangerous for the structure, especially for the steel in concrete structure. So we have to avoid chloride penetrating into the concrete. You see, in the normal concrete, if it is in the marine environment, or otherwise, if it is in the other environment also, wherever the chloride or any other salts are coming in, then these are the problems. Because of the moisture, in the moisture soluble salts, that mean chloride or sulfates. Sulfates also does the same process. So that are penetrating inside, I said already, moisture automatically it will be making a balancing effect. So it is attaching on the dried concrete, it is going in. That is the path it creates. Then automatically the salts also penetrating into the steel surface and it starts corroding. When start corroding, you will be accumulated with the corrosion product. The corrosion product is four times higher than the volume loss of the steel. So what happened in the, I mean, embedded steel, the surface accumulation of corrosion product happens. Then what happened? Because of the volume higher, it exerts a pressure. When exerts a pressure, there will be a crack. Further, it is expanding and finally, the weaker portion where the cover thickness is very less, there it falls out. So, the uh, steel is exposed outside, then further it is getting corroded, the structure is integrity gone, then the whole, you will be getting whole failure. Okay. So, these are the process happening in the concrete. Then you may be having doubt how to measure the quantum of corrosion or where it corroding, what means it has corroded. For that, there are some monitoring methods. The classical method number one is open circuit potential using reference electrodes, both for reinforcement and pre stressing steel. The second one, resistivity of the concrete. When the concrete undergoes deterioration, the deterioration means there is carbonation. How the carbonation happening means CO2 or industrial pollution when it is facing on the concrete. The concrete having the reaction, for example, CO2 reacting with the CaOH twice, it forms calcium carbonate. So that is the way when the CaOH twice is consumed as calcium carbonate. And what happens? Reduction of pH is happening. And there also volume increases. There will be a deterioration of the concrete. Number first one is steel reinforcement corrosion. Second one is deterioration of the concrete. So both together, completely your structure going to fail. Next one, cable resistance. In the pre-stressed concrete bridges, you have the cables for post-tensioning and pre-tensioning. Those cable resistance can also explain about the status of the steel, I mean, cable within the concrete. Then macro cell, we have to make a potential mapping. When you are making the potential mapping, we can able to identify 
the location where the corrosion initiates. So that vulnerable locations, when you make a potential mapping, you can identify that and you can make, a, you can attempt for rehabilitation, then you can solve the corrosion process on your structure. Then corrosion rate measurement that will give exactly how much rate of corrosion is happening per year. Next is chloride contamination level. You can take the core of the concrete in the laboratory. We can check up how much chloride already contaminated. If you know the contaminated quantum of the chloride, then you can able to identify the corrosion rate and you can able to identify your structure, residual life of the first structure. Then you know very well air quality, air temperature, relative humidity, then rain pore level, okay, barometric pressure and so on. So with all these things contributes the deterioration of your structure. So you have to have these kind of a parameters. Well, then you can add other parameters also for measurement, which are uh, ultrasonic pulse velocity. You can use the rebound hammer about the, you can identify the, how much uh, deterioration has happened or not, and use the phenamcaline indicator to identify your concrete, whether it is carbonated or not. Like that, there are so many other new equipments have also come. We can use for identification, I mean, condition assessment of your concrete structure. This and all, you have to do it during the initiation period. For example, these are the case studies. This is actually uh, the southern part of the India, one of the water tank. That water tank stored RO water. And the RO water, that is sea water converted into uh, drinking water the, with the RO process. And that water has been stored on this tank and it has got corrosion. So we visited and those water tanks and we checked it and the solution also we have given. You are just seeing the surface, inside surface of the water tank. There are some leaching and the entire surface is brownish color wherever the uh, iron pipes are there and that are corroded. Now this is uh, some of the places, uh, some industrial places, the concrete, even though they have given a lining, and it also corroded. This is the foundation of our steel structure. It all corroded. You can see that. This is not in the near seashore. This is in the factory where they are handling the hydrochloric acid. So the hydrochloric acid fume contains rich in chloride. So that penetrates inside and it has uh, created more corrosion over there. Okay, the open circuit potential, we, we can class, I mean, uh, classically, we can call it as OCP measurement. What are the things required? It requires a reference electrode. Reference electrode of different type, that is AG, AGCL, AGCL uh, that means uh, silver, silver chloride, and saturated columnar electrode, and you can use uh, uh, copper sulfate saturated electrode. And nowadays people are using MnO2 based solid electrolyte type. People are using, uh, that is uh, very much useful for the bridges or any of the structure because all other reference electrodes are liquid based, that MnO2 solid based, so that can be used very well throughout the structure. So you need one cell, reference cell, and another one connected to, you have a reinforcement rod. And you have to have a measuring high, high impedance voltmeter to measure the potentials. I said already potentials means in the potential pH diagram with respect to different pH, that steel exhibits certain electrochemical potential. So in the surface of the concrete, we have to find the electrochemical potential is not constant. It varies, depends upon the different contamination of the concrete surface. If more chloride is there, then correspondingly, you will get higher open circuit, more negative open circuit potential. 
like that if it is carbonated you will get a different kinds of a potential so in the surface with the different grades you have to find the open circuit potential and make a mapping find which is the which are the gray area and that are vulnerable on contaminated with other halide ions or any contaminations so the ocp is mostly useful to identify qualitatively you can identify whether corrosion is initiated or not so for example the c876 astm c876 gives idea about open circuit potential the open circuit potential you can able to identify the probability of corrosion so for example i have given uh, this table two types one is with the versus to saturated columnar electrode another is copper sulfate uh, electrode so in those things the potential measurements if uh, the saturated columnar electrode minus 275 more than more negative than minus 275 it leads to greater than 90% probability of the corrosion that means your structure is already corroded if it is between minus 275 to minus 125 it is in the initiation period and more negative more positive than minus 124 your structure somewhat better that means less probability 10% of less than 10% of the probability that means it is okay it is not all corroded so by qualitatively you can make an assessment of your structure by using this open circuit potential measurements suppose for example you are not able to get the connection of uh, your steel reinforcement then how to make a measurements so you can use two electrodes you make one electrode i mean stable and another electrode you can make it two or the same identical electrodes and another one you can make it as a mobile one one make it as fixed another is make it as mobile at exactly on the grids so in that cases also it will give an idea so electrochemical mobility it will give and also where are the gray areas also you can able to identify by way of uh, surface potential measurements that is also giving a qualitative assessment for example these are the qualitative assessment number one is open circuit potential for example the first graph completely of open circuit potential in the open circuit potential we have that and it is compared with the surface potential also you can just see both are almost identical only thing the magnitude is different you can able to identify almost the magnitude is almost um, my magnitude is different but the profile is almost same the profile you are seeing both side both the graph almost same so that means if the reinforcement connection if you are not able to get in that cases you can use surface potential using two reference electrodes and to make the same survey then you can make a mapping then you can identify the gray area for example the first one first one is you are seeing that where is more negative minus 194 it is green is dark green so this area wherever the green is there those area you are getting more corrosion for example you are seeing here the downside also if it is there here you can have this is almost less minus less this uh, the, so this area it is comes on the corrosion so with this way you can able to compare nowadays these kind of uh, corrosion measurement sensors are available which is imported so these sensors during the construction you can keep inside and uh, you can embed it in, inside the concrete and you can make the concrete then uh, from here you can take the lead outside signal leads outside and continuously that can be measured so whether your structure is corroded or not then you can able to identify by using of this 
so instead of this in uh, we ourselves prepared the same kind of uh, sensors so that is very easily we can use that also available yeah when cecri csir cecri we have then uh, two kinds of sensor number one is corrosion rate sensor three electrode system and another one is potential sensor this is the one this is made of mno2 solid electrolyte and this can be used as a reference electrode this can be used as a corrosion rate sensor whatever does in the previous one the same work we can do it with this and with certain uh, hardware we can able to find the corrosion rate at any instant when it is embedded inside the concrete uh, this is the way we have made the condition assessment for example uh, in the structure we have made this are the uniform intervals of the grids so from this grid points uh, we kept our reference electrodes and we moved along this and measured and we have given to our software and we have found the uh, mapping you are seeing that that one of the uh, pillar which is the underground storage there yes, it is uh, uh, deterioration is done sir any question no, no, we are seeing the pillar. Just I'm responding here, responding to our question. Query. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Now, this is the topo of inside uh, uh, funnel type water tank. We have measured uh, the, these many points in uh, the uniform grid and after that subjected for the uh, mapping and identified the location and rehabilitation measures have been given. This is the view, this photograph shows uh, from the uh, uh, RO plan, the water is stored and uh, underground st uh, storage tank. This is the biggest tank. From here, it is pumped to the water tank. And after that, it is going for the distribution. So here, the main problem is they have added carbon dioxide during the process. So that CO2, that uh, creates the more corrosion on the uh, concrete structure and as well as the whatever the steel is available there and it created the problem. Now this is the phenolphthalein indicator to identify whether the concrete surface is deteriorated or not. Here is not deteriorated because the concrete surface you are seeing that in the surface it is not, it, it, it has to be colored. When it is colored, the pH is not reduced. Here, the surface is not colored. That means the surface is deteriorated. Yeah, this is the cover thickness. How much uh, cover provided that we have checked. And this is the corrosion rate measurement using the Godring technique. This is the connection to the steel reinforcement. This is the guardring technique. This is the equipment. It directly gives the corrosion rate. Now, this is the rebound hammer on the water tank. Uh, you are seeing that this is the corrosion rate. Again, a corrosion rate measurement, connection to the reinforcement. And these are the three electrode system, which we have uh, made our own arrangements. And through this, we can able to find what is the corrosion rate. You are seeing the resistivity measurement. Mami, Kavya phone So, this is... Yes, sir? Please continue, sir. Okay. The resistivity measurement you are seeing now, this is the four proof resistivity meter. This principle is a Venner method. So through this, we can able to find the resistivity of the concrete. If there is high resistivity, that will exhibit the concrete uh, good quality. The lower resistivity, that will exhibit contamination of the concrete. Now they are measuring the uh, cover thickness. This is one of the industry which is in uh, Kerala. This is also, again, this is the surface potential. One is made it as fixed. These are the grid points that the mobile electrode. Yeah, with this, this kind of measurements we can make a yeah, smaller uh, measurements itself sufficient for any maintenance engineer. You can have only a reference electrode 
and with the high impedance multimeter you can able to identify your structure has corroded or not qualitatively you can assess when qualitatively assessed then immediately you can go for further rehabilitation work further measures you can take and you are start you can save your structure okay <clears throat> now what are we have seen the corrosion assessment of uh, the concrete structure then how the corrosion protection so corrosion protection when you are talking about before making any construction all the steel reinforcement can be coated can be coated and embedded inside and uh, that can protect the steel against corrosion this is one way number 2 you can add chemicals that is called it as inhibitors which you can add in the concrete mix and that will protect your structure because whatever the chloride is coming in that will consume and that will make a different kind of a product and it will not allow to attack on the steel surface so that is chemical inhibitors the third thing you can have a surface coating the concrete surface can make a coating okay you can make a coating on the concrete surface the slide is not moving yeah i am just keeping okay, okay. i am not okay, third okay. one is third one is surface coating and fourth one you can go for electrochemical method of protections so that are that are and all uh, we will discuss now yeah you are seeing that uh, this is one of the bridge just a minute yeah this is one of the bridge actually coated you are seeing that the coating is uh, what happened yeah the coating is already in in the damaged condition so this is why you have to make a proper uh, uh, way of uh, surface coating you have to make and correspondingly your structure is going to be protected you can see that this is one of the defects <clears throat> when you are going for surface coating you can make a uh, <clears throat> this is a material and application both are very very important selection of material and make a um, application method uh, in introducing a proper application method both are very very important about the durability of the surface coating when the surface coating is good then automatically your structure also protected so what are the materials here i am highlighting is epoxy red oxide primer on the surface and epoxy mio high build middle coat and aliphatic polyurethane sealing coat why aliphatic polyurethane sealing coat we have to give so because the last one will not undergo ultraviolet degradation so in the sunlight you have the ultraviolet that will degrade the coating any polymer so if you are using aliphatic polyurethane so that will not degrade your uh, painting that is why nowadays or asian paints or anybody ultra i mean they are using some ultra which are polyurethane based when the polyurethane is given in the outside the structure then your uh, coating system will be good it serves the purpose otherwise within short duration that will undergo degradation due to ultraviolet so these are the material selection why epoxy red oxide primer is given means because epoxy having very high adhesion with the concrete that is why epoxy is given why epoxy mio high build is given so mio <coughs> is the pigment incorporated into the epoxy that will have a layer laminar type of protection it will give i will explain later that and these are the application method so what happened the uh, uh, if any uh, cover concrete is done then you have to make a sweep sand blasting and you have to make a yard jetting for cleaning the dust then primer application and intercoat intervals you have to give a time for uh, drying then after that middle coat then give a drying time then you have to apply the sealing coat so these are the procedures you have to follow 
<clears throat> okay, now we can see that how this is getting protected. For example, this is epoxy red acid primer. I mean, it is having very good addition. I don't know why it is. So, a uh, very good addition that peroxide, red oxide primer is giving. Then epoxy MIO, you are seeing here very close up, this uh, is a flaky type pigments. The flaky type pigments means that when chloride cannot travel straight away, it will have long route to move. So because of that flaky type, uh, uh, MIO is added into epoxy. Finally, the aliphatic PU top coat is given. So the PU top coat that has been uh, resistant to ultraviolet. So this is the mechanism. Now, let us come to the polymers in concrete, how it is useful for the concrete structure. Number one, as a binder, you can make a polymer concrete, you can make a polymer impregnation, you can make a polymer bars, non-metallic bars. But non-metallic bars is not successful. They have in the uh, globally people have uh, tried, but it's not successful. The reason is there will be a thermal sensitivity of the non-metallic bars. Because of thermal sensitivity, it has a long, I mean, degradation of mechanical properties very faster. Uh, because of that, that has not been attracted. Then polymer concrete, polymer impregnations were used for repair and rehabilitations. Polymer concrete can be used as a overlay when you are doing the repair and rehabilitation. And polymer impregnation, whenever the degradation happened, then you can have a polymer impregnation that will arrest the uh, impregnated, I mean, carbonated concrete, and it will have a good strength over there. Next, as an admixture, you can have a polymer into the concrete as an admixture, and it can be used. It will also have a very good protection. Second thing, organic inhibitors or inorganic inhibitors. Inorganic inhibitors, normally people are using. Now, organic inhibitors can also be used. Then plasticizers, which normally in the construction industry, we are using it. And the next one is coatings. When you are talking about the coating, there are two types. One is coating to concrete, another is coating to steel. So this is the coating to concrete, just I have explained to you. Now coating to steel, that I'm going to explain. So whatever be the coatings we have, either coating to concrete or coating to steel, we have uh, three types. Inorganic coatings can be given, organic coatings can be given, and composite coating can be given. So that we can see here. And metallic coatings also people are giving. Comparison of coating options to steel reinforcement. One is galvanized steels, they have experience, they have tried in various locations, and that has been given sacrificial protection. That is, uh, uh, people are using it, especially in UK, one of the bridge, they have completely used the galvanized reinforcements. Uh, they have uh, successful. Next, currently, it is in India and elsewhere, fusion bonded epoxy coating system have been used. The fusion bonded epoxy coating is completely of epoxy. It is a highly organic coating. It's a barrier type of coating. You can simply apply on the steel surface and you can use it. <clears throat> okay. Then what is the problem of fusion bonded epoxy coating? Number one, it is a highly organic based. Our steel reinforcements are, I mean, uh, designed for the structure is based on the bond. When fusion bonded epoxy coating is applied, <clears throat> the interface between coated steel and the concrete have only 85% of the conventional reinforcements. If reinforcement bonding is 100%, it has only 85%. This is one of the disadvantages. Correspondingly, you have to increase uh, number of steels and so on. 
that is the one one thing second thing the patch repair work the patch repair works people are using epoxy and also while pouring the concrete it creates a small i mean pinholes through the pinholes the water or contaminants it is going inside and create under film corrosion <clears throat> the outside of the <clears throat> coated reinforcement looks good but on the surface of the steel reinforcement you will be getting a corrosion that is called it as under film corrosion which has been reported by andrade and as well as professor sagwes from us they have uh, published so many papers on it then that also not serves the purpose then which is best we have to go for cement based system either if you are going for the inorganic type so cement based system it is quite good for increasing the bond but at the same time all cement based system are brittle so what happen you cannot bend it so what you have to make all bending work and then after that you have to apply then you have to embed inside during the handling also there are chances of peeling off for that cement polymer composite coating system it is uh, both organic and as well as inorganic together blended together and it has been developed <clears throat> so the mechanism you can just see here these are the electrochemical analysis done number 1 the first one is uncoated this is the tafel slope this is giving exactly the corrosion rate so when you see that this is the corrosion rate x axis is the corrosion rate when you see here is the cement the corrosion rate is less but the potential is very high highly anodic side when you are seeing for epoxy this is number 1 the potential is near to epoxy and the corrosion rate also correspondingly less because highly barrier type of coating when you are seeing here that is, that is cpcc this is your uh, uncoated bar this is coated bar much lesser than the uncoated bar the corrosion rate is much much lesser so in that case this has both barrier near to this when comparing this <coughs> both barrier and all as well as the protection so this is the mechanism incorporated while developing this system <coughs> so this system developed at csi or cecri during 88 to 93 and 93 that has been patented and 97 that has been released for usage <clears throat> now this is the system it has primer and sealing coat the primer polymer content is 40% coverage is this the color is strawberry ceiling coat 45% polymer content i mean solid content covering and olive green color it is a passive aiding come barrier type both the advantages it has <clears throat> this is the application procedure the surface is to be properly clean either by abrasive blasting or any other means the surface should be clean without any corrosion product then primer is to be applied either dipping or brush or water water it may be then after that sealing coat is to be applied that's all the process is over allow for curing this is the surface prepared reinforcement you are seeing the completed reinforcement which is kept for curing so now it can be stacked like this we have to have a wooden plank for each layer and we have to stack these are the coated uh, steel reinforcement it is actually one of the railway bridge that photographs are uh, taken you see that after the stacking it can be bent so it is not damaging it is not at all damaging 
this is one of the file you see that this is one of the girder it is coated with the i mean the cement polymer composite coating system actually this is the bridge the shornur mangalore railway bridge this again the same uh, site you see that how the people are conventionally using that how the people are concreting it properly yeah so the performance evaluation it has to be done with the astm standards which is called it as astm a7757795 m94 so what are the evaluation of the coated steel you have to find the flexibility of the coating by way of addition and the accelerator electrochemical corrosion test that is called it as two volt impressed voltage test we have to conduct then chemical resistant test we have to do then salt fog test which is in the salt ray chamber and bond strength we have to the coated reinforcement we have to have the bond strength the bond strength here is 1.2 times that mean 120 percent and strain compatibility we have to see, check <clears throat> with respect to when you are making a stress strain relationship that strain compatibility of the coating coated steel when on par with the uh, uncoated steel we have to check for example you can see that this is actually in the site how people are making a bending you see this is the lever only padded arrangements otherwise this will uh, spoil the coating so they can bend like this only the padding is given see this is again in the site how the people are doing it even then this is not all a problem this is a pull out strength test before pull out and after pull out uh, the slip is measured and correspondingly compared with the uncoated system this is the utm we have used you can see here uh, visually there are different rods mm -hmm. subjected for bond strength so number 1 control number 2 cpcc primer number 3 epoxy powder coating number 4 cpcc coated and ip net and reductase so this various type of coating system applied on the steel reinforcement you can just see here the surface uncoated steel the steel i mean concrete it is already on addition higher addition and there are passivation happens when you are coming to primer it will is little less when you are coming to epoxy the addition of the concrete is almost nil it looks as fresh this is actually taken out from the concrete and when you are coming to cpcc almost the surface as like the uncoated steel because of that you are able to get very high bond strength this is again ip net also as like epoxy so again red oxide you can see that very less when comparatively you can compare 4 and 1 almost same what is the bond strength mechanism in this coating system this is your steel rebar you are applying a primer the primer it has pi bond effect so what happened the primer bonding with the steel which is fe and it is creating a film and having a higher addition and the sealing coat of the same polymer is used there is no difference between the addition on the interface of the primer and the sealing coat but the sealing coat we have incorporated reactive cements over there so we have treated the cement and incorporated in it so such a way that while hydration is happening that is also hydrating so because of that you are getting very good interaction between coating and as well as concrete because of that it has higher bond strength suppose for example while you are pouring a concrete there is we cannot avoid pinholes so when the pin hole is created the primer is of hydrophobic in nature whatever cl minus these are the vulnerable thing which is creating a corrosion if it is coming in because of hydrophobicity is it is making repulsive action 
it cannot come in so this is the mechanism provided here such a way that that cl minus and so4 cannot reach the surface of the steel even if it is hydrophobic automatically this will also not coming in it will be repulsive so that is the way this has got a corrosion protection nature mechanism this is the pre stressing strand coated with uh, uh, cpcc it has got uh, even now this is uh, during uh, eight i mean uh, beginning of 90s this has been done even now it is under stressed condition you see that uncoated steel already snapped you can see that the coated steel is still in intact so these are the specifications for the uh, new system and these many people they are manufacturing this system this has been uh, transferred to these many companies and all the companies that is including berger all these companies are manufacturing and they are supplying the coated steel which are useful for example recently in the bangalore metropolitan uh, railway that is bmrcl and uh, there you might have seen an olive green color coating was there given on the reinforcement that is cement polymer composite coating so this are the coating system these are the the flyovers in uh, bombay in bombay thane uh, thane uh, this uh, flyovers are coated with entire steel these are all again yeah this bridge also coated with this yeah so these are the protective system and uh, i will uh, leave some gap and if you have any doubt you can ask me then if it is okay then i will continue for the next part uh, uh, thank you dr krishna kumar sir a nice presentation very highly informative for all the <coughs> construction engineers because this is the most neglected part not aware without uh, awareness also there may be a lapses in controlling the corrosion and also i am uh, happy and uh, congratulate you for the invention what you have done during uh, the scientist uh, now you can see society has benefited and you are going to discuss uh, with the application of these in a uh, bridge structures so yeah, actually the corrosion prevention is very very important especially the bridge structures because the bridge collapse uh, it is a uh, imagine the prestige of the country because these are the monuments of the countries uh, the any infrastructural project they actually you had to give a 100% guarantee of the performance of the lifespan of the structure see one of the, the all bridges are coming under marine environment and uh, it is aggressive and very aggressive environment or extreme environment so actually as a construction engineer we have to see that what type of metal selection is very very important sir has rightly mentioned and he has highlighted till that what are the how electrochemical reaction takes place and what are the measurement techniques are there for how to measure the probability of corrosion how to measure the rate of corrosion and what are the various preventive techniques i request all the construction engineers you try to adopt the minimum is corrosion inhibitors i think uh, professor will agree uh, that it is available very less cost only the cost of the i think concrete cost will not go sir with respect to uh, inhibitors no sir it will not be much costlier it will and, be 0.5% uh, in a very very less quantity sir that is the various types of inhibitors we can add yeah. very very less quantity Sir, I have suggested Concare chemicals ten years back. Concare, I think you have heard of that. They have tested. Sir, Concare, Concare chemical is invented by us. Oh, congratulations, sir! <laughs> Because I recommended in Coimbatore few sites, sir. They go came with a report of this one. So yeah. I request all the engineers adopt some techniques because water cement ratio is very high. That yeah. makes uh, the concrete is very poor quality. It cannot protect the rebar, and also proper cover is not doing. As per IS four five six two thousand. the concrete cover is very very important to protect the rebars that is most neglected water cement ratio is high cover blocks are not properly made and provided <coughs> especially the bottom portion and side portion there is definitely in aggressive environment even normal environment sir has given a graph 
it is a question of time only. Is it not? The initiation, propagation, sir, as given. So it is a question of the NY exposure condition also. Therefore, I request all the engineers to take some preventive measures. At least you can recommend or you can add in your uh, budget uh, uh, some percentage of uh, corrosion inhibitors in your estimation. Get it approval from your project directors. We have to update the project director. That is the purpose of conducting all this upskilling program, especially with the corrosion. I'm uh, very happy about your presentation, sir. I really enjoyed all Thank your you, presentations. Now, any questions from the participants? Yeah, Namrata. Yeah. Madam, uh, you can ask the question. Yes, yeah. Hello. Please, I request sir. to introduce, uh, please introduce yourself <laughs> before asking question. At least, uh, sir, uh, please, uh, yeah, please introduce. Uh, sir, uh, myself, Namrata, working as a AE in uh, Nirmiti Kendra Arban. Uh, sir, my question is uh, the epoxy primer of uh, MIO high build. Uh, ah. the, at what temperature does it resist, sir? sir at what temperature? Uh, and... All organic coatings. Uh, Hello? Uh, Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I request participants, please uh, mute. Only the who is asking the question can mute. All others, please mute. So, please go ahead. Yes, sir. Tell me, sir. The uh, all epoxy or water may be organic coatings which you are going to use for your structure. It is to yes, be sir. ambient temperature. If you wanted okay. to make a higher temperature application, the yeah, separate yes, type of the coating system you have to use. Okay. If you want any uh, any requirement or anything, you contact me always through our chat. Yeah, I will share participants in a group. Sir, contact address also. He is also a chief consulting officer, especially in corrosion preventive measures. Even a lot of structures in Bangalore is doing, even though his place is Karakudi. And I will share the contact details and email. You please coordinate all the engineers. Yeah, any other anytime if you want, you can call engineer? me. No problem. Hello. Any questions? Sanat? Arpita, madam, is having some questions. Arpita, please introduce yourself and ask question. Uh, sir, this is Arpita. I'm an yeah. engineer at PWD Karnataka, Bangalore. Mm. Hello, can you hear me? Am I audible, sir? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, Please proceed. Sir, uh, you mentioned a lot of coating, uh, which is uh, used for reinforcements. What, madam? Hello. Ah, coating for reinforcements. There is a lot of. Yeah, Hello? Uh, is there any with respect to the reaction with respect to additive, sir? Can we use it for uh, retarding of time speed of uh, uh, Madam, your audience, uh, along, so please post, we will take up the question. Please post your question to chat box. Your audio is not clear. Please post, we will take up the question. No issue. Any other? Any other questions? No, in chat box it is not there. You know, ask Arpita to post there only because the audio problem is there actually. So, what is the my only one question, sir? What is the approximate cost, sir? As on today, you what you invented a CPC material, and there are so many companies <coughs> who are manufacturing. Whether the rate is same with all or it is different? Yes, sir. That is depends upon the uh, manufacturer. Okay. Our approximate cost is eight thousand to ten thousand rupees per ton of steel. Okay, okay, okay. Sir, it is proven uh, nowadays what happened now. Uh, mm. In Gujarat, so many bridges already adopted. In okay. Bombay, you know how aggressive it is. They are mm. uh, adopted. There is no corrosion sign now. And especially in my house, I have adopted this system. Uh, 2004, I have constructed my neighboring house also. Okay. And my neighbor, he has made uh, two times uh, uh, repair. I think a uh, lifespan of the RCC is 100, more than 100 years, sir, building. <laughs> In <laughs> my, my structure. 60 years, when you're using a protective coating, definitely go more than 100. The, my structure, I am not at all seeing, not even small crack. See, sir. That Thank time you. I had spent maximum of 60,000 rupees in 2004 for entire uh, steel I have coated with that. So actually, this material is available in YouTube. You contact all the agencies. For any doubts, you can contact uh, Dr. Krishna Kumar also for any help required. We'll help you, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You have anything to show, sir? 
Uh, shall I continue the next slide? Uh, next slide, you can go, sir. Uh, the case studies. Sir yes. is going to present few case studies uh, he has involved, especially the bridge structures. Uh, this is the one I am going to give you. Okay. It's a case study. Uh, actually, uh, repairing of concrete structure. This actually we have done for the uh, Chennai port rest. They have some problem, this uh, same kind of a corrosion problem. And we have adopted complete repairing of concrete structure. That I am going to give you. Now, this is the container berth. So, whenever ship is coming, all unloading is to be done. I don't know why my this thing is going. <coughs> so, the ship, uh, the all containers is to be uh, unloaded in the uh, through the uh, thing uh, container berth. So, the water is deep you will be having a piles, over piles, there will be a deep beams and after that there is a platform. So this is the normal construction. Because of the wave action, this is under the sea. Because of the wave action, there are a lot of erosion and corrosion happened. For example, in the top I have given some of the thing, almost there are numerous corrosion and even some cracks we have seen. There is some shear cracks, all the cracks, even corrosion cracks, everything we have seen. So all the covered concrete, it is exposed outside. All the steel are corroded very, very fast and it is in a highly dangerous condition. So this is the way we have seen there and we have suggested for the repair and rehabilitation. They have adopted. Now it is in good condition. Now I'll show you. This is a schematic of the structure. So initially, these are the piers. So you are seeing here, these are the piers. I have some problem, I don't know. And the piers, over the piers, there is a deep beam. Then after that, you are having a dex, I mean, another uh, lateral beams, then dex laps. So these are the different uh, levels. So these are the schematic of the structure, the container bird structure. Now actually, now actually you are seeing here, these kind of corrosion, I mean, this kind of damage we have seen. So now these damages used to be fulfilled are rehabilitated to the original dimensions to take up further loads. So, these are the arrangements we have done. So, how we have, we have to make, make surface preparation. The surface preparation, these are the sequences. First, we have to make a site arrangement. When you are doing the surface preparation, we have to make a proper safety aspects of the structure. And after that, you have to do the surface preparation. If you are not doing a proper safety arrangements, then during the surface preparation, there are chances of collapses. Then uh, you have to make a pre-surface preparation. That means cleaning on the existing surface to remove all oil, all dust, all these things. Then you have to go for the removal of unsound concrete by way of uh, abrasive blasting. And after uh, uh, blasting is over, you have to go for the post-preparation. That means air jetting to clean all the dust and other things. Then finally, the engineer has to inspect the prepared surface. If it is okay, then it is ready for the next operation or otherwise you have to do further surface preparation. So during the surface preparation, all the steel reinforcements, if it is embedded, if it is visible, everything should be properly cleaned. So these are the things you are seeing here. Preparation of cracks. First, what you have to do? Preparation of surface preparation is over. Then after that, you have to go for the crack preparation. So all the cracks are to be properly prepared for cleaning of oil or dust removal by compressed air. So this is what we have to do. 
then fixing of 12 mm dia injection nipple that is the 12 mm or 10 mm or 14 mm whatever it may be that selection of the nipple size is depends upon the depth of the crack so based on that you can fix your nipples over there and sealing the crack line and blowing air from succession uh, from nipple to nipple and remove all the dust which is available there then after that you have to go for epoxy based grout material why we are going for epoxy based grout material means epoxy will have a very good adhesion and very good mechanical strength so almost that mechanical strength is equal to uh, almost your concrete it will not uh, it has more elasticity so it will not be that much brittle so low uh, molecular weight epoxy we have to make a select as a uh, grout material for that the part life is 20 to 30 minutes after adding the curing agent then elongation is one person shrinkage is very less viscosity 200 to 300 centipiles so low viscous epoxy is selected for the grout material this is actually we have recommended for the chennai port trust So now this has to be mixed properly. The ratio as per the manufacturer, quantity, small quantity we have to take and we have to inject it. The mixing should be homogeneous. Grouting, we have to use a proper equipment and injected through nipples. The pressure is 6 to 7 kg per centimeter square. So it will go inside. And so that is the way you can make a grout injection of the cracks. When the crack is sealed, then after that we can go for the additional reinforcement. So the existing reinforcement we have to clean properly and you have to add the additional reinforcement. So for both the reinforcement, remove all the rust. The rust product on the surface is to be removed properly. The blind side of the reinforcement, which is on the other side, is to be cleaned by the mechanical cleaning. Sandblasting you can use on the additional rain for, uh, reinforcement for remove all the rust. So this is the cleaning method you can use for the existing and as well as the new reinforcement. And the application of the protective coating, you can, you can apply the protective coating on the uh, new reinforcement as well as the exposed reinforcement that you have to apply. Okay, so when you are talking about uh, the additional reinforcement, how much quantity you have to have? On the existing steel deterioration, how much corroded, quantum of corrosion is how much? Accordingly, you have to select it. For example, the cross section, if it is 15 to 25%, uh, if you have a reduction in cross section, then you have to have the additional reinforcement. Both in syrups, ties, and all principal, I mean, main reinforcement, Everything you have to make a proper lapping, adequate lapping, you have to have proper tying arrangements. If it is required, you have to have a proper anchoring mechanism. That is the way you can have uh, incorporate uh, the new reinforcement over there, additional reinforcement over there. And next is uh, bonding layer. So when, when the uh, additional reinforcement is added, then you have to go for the bonding layer. The surface is to be given a bonding layer, the existing concrete. So for that, you can take any kind of either acrylic or any kind of uh, polymers you can take such a way that it has to have a highly impermeable bonding between the old and new. If it is not, if, if it is not impermeable layer, then what happened? The new and old will, uh, both sides, it will have a reactions. So in that cases, you have to have a proper bonding layer. The uh, purpose of the bonding layer is, number one, it has to take up the new material and it should have a high bonding between old and new concrete. This is one. And second thing, protection. So these are the two aspects you have to use the bonding layer. So the material, you can use the part life is two to three hours, curing time one to two days, over coating time. Six to nine hours you can go. These are the compressive, direct and shear strength. 
So such a way that you can select a proper bonding layer and you can utilize it. So application may be either brush or uh, uh, spray, any of the kind you can use the bonding layer. Then again, preparation of concrete surface for the, after bonding layer is applied, then you have to go for the preparation of Uh, then, uh, <clears throat> just a minute, I'm having some problem. Okay, then the bonding layer material is to be properly clean and it has to be blended. Then application you can make, you have to first, before applying the bonding layer, you have to inspect the surface and it should be free from contaminant. The surface should be dry. Uh, you can apply by either brush, roller or spray. Then thickness is to be sufficiently filled. Curing as per the, depends upon the polymer, you can give a proper curing. So next is short creek. So for after, I've seen first initially the crack clearing, then surface preparation. When the surface preparation is over, then you can go for the bonding layer. When the bonding layer is over, you can go for short crete. So bonding layer and additional reinforcement, everything is over. Then you can go for short crete. Short crete is a concrete and wet process and dry process you can use. These are the ingredients it is given and it has to be, it has to get minimum of 30 to 40 mm thickness. So you can apply over there. So these are the specifications, cement, aggregate, and mix one is to three is to one, and what cement ratio 0 0.45, 0 0.5, accelerators, non-string chloride free accelerator, that is for curing, and pH, it should be alkali, solubility, it has to freely soluble in water, the initial setting time, three to four minutes, because we are adding the accelerator, then final setting time, 10 to 12 minutes. Then the apparatus, you can have a compressor. You can have a compressor and the nozzle velocity three meter per second, water pressure is 10 kg per centimeter square. We have to apply over there. So this is the mixing all ingredients. You have to mix it properly and the high velocity jetting is to be done. So thickness is uh, one operation, 25 to 30, 35 mm. Perpendicular to the plane you have to have, continuous circular motion you can apply over there. The short rate will build up 30 to the nearly 25 to 35 mm thickness. So these are the materials. So next uh, polymer overlay, uh, when the short crete is over, allow for curing. After the, uh, the uh, curing is done within 10 minutes because accelerator is added. Then you can go for po polymer overlay finish. That is like a cover concrete. So that people are using the polymer based overlay. That is polymer uh, concrete kind of thing. And that has to be a uh, polymer can be added into the normal mortar. That is generally what we specify, cement OPC, sand free from contaminants, river sand used, and polymer acrylic emulsion used, and water good quality. It's a water soluble uh, acrylic polymer, and mix one is to three ratio, water cement ratio is 0.1, and polymer cement ratio is 0.2. These are the materials selected for the polymer overlay. Then, uh, this is... Properly mix 10 to 15 per kg of cement and concrete mixer and polymer, both the things blended together, the material mixing is done. How it has been applied? Initial setting of the short crate. When the short crate got uh, settled, I mean cured, uh, the final setting time is 10 minutes. So after that, uh, then you have to make a removal of loose material by blooming. The surface is to be properly removed, whatever be the loose material which is not adhered on the base short tree, that has to be removed. Final set, the loose materials 
it has to be make a small sand blasting sweep that is called it a sweep sand blasting and uh, cleaning is to be done with the air jet and pre wetting of the polymer and mix slurry so what polymer we have used on the polymer overlay acrylic emulsion the same thing you can make a pre wetting after that you can apply the polymer based mortar we can apply by screed mortar type or uh, travel or any other means you can apply on the surface of the short grit so after that you can allow for the curing depends upon the direction of the manufacturer and that will give you a good finish after that if you require you can give us a surface coating and this is the method you can employ for your rehabilitation of existing concrete which is affected by highly deteriorated and as well as highly corroded concrete surface yeah i think this is over yes sir uh, sir i think now 5:30 yeah yeah uh, let us have some discussion I, if you yeah, want yeah. i can have some more uh, slides also yes sir sir uh, thank you for sharing a few case studies okay uh, very interesting uh, even uh, I, i noticed the first time uh, repair rehabilitation of roads generally okay. repairs of bridges and structures uh, come across yeah. first time i am seeing uh, you are rehabilitated and road in chennai told yeah what is the approach hello hello i am audible sir? ah yes sir yes sir sir actually i come across uh, many repairs and rehabilitation of structures only bridges and structures so far i have not come across roads First hmm. time through your PPT presentation only I noticed. Sir, that. this is not road, sir. This is container berth in the. Oh, that uh, is the deck slab. Port rest. Port rest. Okay, 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 okay. Port rest. Complete uh, rehabilitation of the beams, pile cap, and deck slab. Everything. This is actually above the sea level. Okay, 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 okay. Very interesting information, sir. Yes. Uh, any questions, Arpita? Now your audio is clear. hello arpita i think she is not there okay okay any other questions are there we'll uh, another few how much time required sir for that yeah i think uh, i can uh, go another 20 minutes okay. my next slide okay okay you can continue sir okay sir because there is no question sir okay so this is a uh, cathodic protection of concrete structures uh, this is one of the another way of uh, protection nowadays we are getting more inquiries for cathodic protection uh, the, this is seems to be a 100% protection gives the concrete structure but the only thing uh, a person those who are uh, doing this job they should be highly knowledgeable on the mechanism and as well as the design aspects of the cathodic protection then only that can be adopted without skilled person the cathodic protection cannot be adopted in the existing concrete structure okay so cathodic protection uh, when you are talking about cathodic protection we have to see what are the material uh, free energy of uh, the materials for example in material generally we can classify as more active and less active more active and as well as less active for example uh, platinum is less active that is called as uh, noble material platinum silver and as well as gold these are all uh, noble material it will not corrode in the atmosphere and uh, active material if you are just keeping outside it will start corroding magnesium is more active zinc aluminium iron cast iron stainless steel and stainless steel so and so so these materials are very active when you are coupling these two active more active to less active what is happening this uh, uh, more active material will corrode fast than the less active material if i am connecting platinum to magnesium what happen magnesium will corrode platinum will not corrode so mine is our steel is in uh, uh, iron normally carbon steel okay in the fourth line carbon steel so the carbon steel 
when you are coupling with either aluminium or zinc or magnesium then it will be it will not that uh, both that material will corrode your carbon steel will not corrode that is called sacrificial anode system when you wanted to have protection uh, protection against the steel if you want to give a sacrificial system then you can connect like this any material wanted to protect it has to be connected with more active material then the material will be protected that is the principle of the cathodic protection i am coming to the principle the more active metal will corrode by releasing the electron that is anode least active material will be protected which are under cathode so this is the corrosion mean general principle so cathodic protection artificially you are conversing the material to protect as a cathode so if you want to corrode more active material it will corrode faster than the less active material for example you just see here this is hydrochloric acid if you are suspend two materials iron and zinc in the hydrochloric acid both will corrode because in acid both will corrode but which is the one most i mean fast corrode zinc will corrode fast than the iron suppose for example if these two linked if zinc and iron connected the iron will not corrode zinc alone will corrode that means because of the connectivity you are allowing zinc to corrode to protect iron so iron will be acting as a cathode zinc will acting as a anode so that is corroding fast and it protecting the iron if you are not connecting both are corroding you see here this is the way zinc it will dissolute like this zinc 2 plus and 2e minus and here the cathode when you are connecting automatically the cathodic reaction happens this is getting protected the iron is getting protected even in the uh, hydrochloric acid if it is connected together that is called it as sacrificial protection system i will go like this <clears throat> the cathodic protection criteria for concrete so here the potential is very very important the initial potential open circuit potential if you are measuring as minus 240 with respect to saturated columnar electrode you have to shift to the little more negative little more negative for example 100 millivolts and it is getting protected for, for that either you can add with the external electrode either by sacrificial or impress current system so for example here more negative than 720 millivolts with respect to silver silver chloride electrode the potential decay of 24 hours this is 100 millivolts shift is more than enough these are the phenomenon people are using that is why i said to employ cathodic protection into your structure you need a skilled person for designing the method of cathodic protection is two type one is sacrificial anode system another is impress current system when you are going for sacrificial system you can use more active material zinc magnesium and aluminium these are the sacrificial anode system is a general concept for example if it is in a pipeline this is uh, our uh, carbon steel pipeline and put one anode over there connect together so the anode getting corroded than the uh, steel pipeline it is protected so this pipeline will not corrode this is the principle used for any ship building in the ship building they are using anodes which is embedded on the surface of the uh, ship hull and accordingly when it is moving the electrolyte is uh, sea water and it is already connected so the ship uh, uh, skull is protected so these are the different ocps 
with respect to different electrodes this is zinc this is zinc alloy generally used for concrete it may be in a wire type or pellet types aluminum alloy anodes these are the aluminum alloy anodes so aluminum and zinc together you will get some aluminum alloy that can also be used for durability so this is the cathodic protection i say there are uh, uh, sacrificial anodes which are embedded uh, on the uh, surface of the uh, steel skull so from that it is getting protected you see here this is the reference electrode and it is connected this is magnesium alloy anodes that can also be used to reduce the faster consumption of the uh, anodes there are spray also we one can do so on the surface of the concrete you can make a spray metallic spray either zinc or magnesium or aluminum anything you can spray on the surface and through that you can connect your reinforcement so for by sacrificial action so this surface metallic surface coating will sacrifice and your steel is getting protected you see here again these are the uh, spray metallic spray so you can see that this is the cathodic i mean uh, with the cathodic protection overlay they are embedded with uh, anodes and it is connected the earlier it was like this yeah this is again embedding of anodes over there yeah this is completely protected with uh, uh, cathodic protection metallic zinc cathodic protection is given so the anodic i mean sacrificial system these are the different uh, advantages but limitation is uh, this is frequently it has to remove and uh, one second you have to embed the knee electrodes if you have a impress current system you can have a noble material also no problem only thing you have to drive a current so that uh, whatever electrode which you are giving it should be a, a act as anode and uh, the noble metals are used and the uh, steel reinforcement connected with the cathode it supply negative current so automatically fe will not release so in that case our uh, carbon steel is protected so what are the things required is direct current you are using through a, a rectifier or the different generator you can use solar power also yeah these are the rectifiers and these are the pixel i mean these are the anodes it can be on the uh, cover concrete you can embed and you can give a connections this is platinized anode this also having a higher durability yeah you are seeing that in the reinforcement there are electrodes they have placed over there and it has metallic connections and the only thing the outside they are connecting with the uh, sources uh, this is uh, titanium anodes and uh, this is for impress current system this can also be incorporated uh, this is for uh, offshore structures this is titanium mesh encapsulation over there and the uh, ps this is on the deck the cathodic protection methods they are making the groove and they are embedding the uh, wire anode wire so here in the uh, soffit of the deck slab it is completely grooved and they embedding the uh, uh, wires and connection is given this is the anode system is already involved so these are the different anodes they can anode pellets they can give so like that this can be uh, given i will give small video over there this video demonstrates patch guard galvanic anode installation 
Patchguard is a new generation galvanic anode for concrete repairs. Patchguard is small and discreet and has the unique benefit of being located in the surrounding host concrete for enhanced current distribution and superior long-term protection. Areas of concrete to be repaired should be broken out to the guidelines outlined in EN 1504. Having exposed the steel reinforcement within the patch repair area, a location for the patch guard anodes should be identified at the edge of the patch. Clean the steel in the vicinity of the proposed patch guard unit location to allow electrical connection of the anode. Then confirm steel continuity in areas to be treated using a high impedance multimeter. Check the resistivity of your meter and cables prior to use and subtract this value from the figure that is read to give a true reading. The resistivity should be 1 ohm or less. If this is not the case, metal tie wires can be used to connect the reinforcing bars to achieve the required electrical continuity. Drill 25mm diameter holes to the depth required into the parent concrete at the side of the patch. Make sure to avoid contact with the steel. Next, soak the holes, making sure any excess water and dust is removed. Apply Duocrete PG mortar to the holes and insert the patch guard unit ensuring that the whole anode surface is covered and that there are no air voids. Now securely attach the anode wire to the pre-cleaned steel surface using the two plastic cable ties provided. To ensure a good electrical connection, the resistance between the tying point on the patch guard anode and the reinforcing steel should be confirmed to be 1 ohm or less using a suitable high impedance meter. Check the resistivity of your meter and cables prior to use and subtract this value from the figure that is read to give a true reading. If the resistance is more than 1 ohm, then the patch guard anode tying point should be removed. The reinforcing steel should be cleaned and the patch guard anode time point reinstalled. This process should be continued until a resistance of 1 ohm or less is achieved. If the repair is not to be reinstated within 2 hours, apply a small amount of repair mortar to cap off the anode. A big advantage with patch guard anodes being located in the parent concrete material is that bonding agents and low shrinkage high resistivity repair mortars can be used in the concrete repair areas. I think with this I am closing my uh, lecture. Uh, any questions always welcome. Uh, thank you, Dr. Krishna Kumar, sir. You were uh, very highly informative and also all the, our engineers have enjoyed it because you have shown a lot of case studies and also what are the various cost-effective preventive measures and also the next is the uh, advanced technology like anodic protection and the cathodic protection. So all engineers must be aware of that and uh, this video is available in a uh, public domain. Arpita, now you have any question? I'll thank you very much, sir. For your time and you, uh, sharing a lot so of much. information that shows how much of research you have done and practically implemented. And I'm happy to share, Professor, uh, Dr. Krishna Kumar sir has patented uh, two, three, I think he has not shared that. that yeah, the yeah. Seven patented and now a lot of royalty is also getting. See, that is the way you have to do all engineers. You have to learn. Sir also almost 62 plus. See, in this age, he is able to present continuously to us very happy and sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thankful to you for your support. Uh, Arpita, you have any question? Just she, uh, she has joined again back. Arpita, yeah. any other questions? Maybe the audio is not sir. Okay, sir. If yeah, I request all the participants to fill the Google form shared by Sanat Kumar for any attendance certificate or a feedback forms. Uh, thank you once again, all the participants, for your uh, interest to sh show 
learning this important topic today, the corrosion uh, aspects. Professor has uh, given all the mechanisms, even preventive measures. What are the new technologies available and what are the, all the case studies discussed? Now it is your, your, you have to take uh, information and I'll share the professor contact details in the group of uh, master's training skill program. For any projects anywhere, you can contact, sir is available for that. I will share both the email and also phone. Thank sure, you sir. once again, Dr. Krishna Kumar, sir. Nice Thank to you, meet you once again after a long gap of three to four <laughs> months, I think. Thank you. Namaste. I'm very happy. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Sarat Kumar, for your uh, continuous support. The last three lectures are there to complete this master training series program. Uh, tomorrow, there is IOT applications are there. Dr. Gulshan is going to uh, talk on IOT applications to in construction industry. Thank you once again to all of you. If there is no question, we'll close the meeting. Thank you, sir. Can I leave? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank you, sir. Sanat? Sir? Live stream, you can cut. Okay, sir, okay. Okay, I can yeah. uh, Tomorrow, this is the topic. All uh, participants, please note IoT application in construction industry because many of the advanced countries are following a lot of new technologies. In that one technology is the Internet of Things. Live streaming, game streaming, okay.